Hi everyone, today I'm going to be talking about conservation of energy, going over some tips to pretty much be solving any kind of problem involving conservation of energy. If you've seen my videos before, I like to really organize everything so things, even though they look very complicated, I break it down to steps that are manageable for anyone to do. So hope you're excited. Here we go. I'm going to be showing a lot of this through examples. All right, first, going through the structure, I'm not going to go too much into detail with it because I want the examples to show how this all works. So first uh, tip that I have here is establish a zero line. It doesn't, it actually doesn't matter where you put the zero line, you're always going to get the correct answer as long as you're consistent. However, it's going to make it the easiest if you put it the lowest point where the object's going to be in the problem. That's how you're going to make it the simplest, and I'll be showing that through the examples. Step number two is write the whole equation. So remember, this is about conservation of energy. So all of the energy at the beginning, all of the mechanical energy at the beginning is going to be equal to all of the mechanical energy at the end. Okay. And I highly suggest when you're looking at each problem, write down potential energy at the beginning, kinetic energy at the beginning, plus elastic potential energy at the beginning is going to equal potential energy final, plus kinetic energy final, plus elastic potential energy final. Write it all down. Even if you think like, oh, there's no springs or elasticity in this. I don't have to put EPE. Write everything down because I've seen this so many times people make silly mistakes without doing this. It does take longer, but you'll, uh, you'll most likely be saving yourself a lot of points with this. Step three, go through each type of energy and see if any of the types of energy should be equal to zero. So first, I like to go through potential energy. If anything is at the zero line, that means that the potential energy is at zero. So like say, for example, uh, a stone is kicked from the air and it, uh, no, from the ground and it goes into the air. So if we put the zero line at the ground, that means at the very beginning, the potential energy is zero. Okay. And we'll go through stuff like that. Uh, if the object is not moving, kinetic energy is equal to zero. So, you know, at any point, if it's not moving, kinetic energy is zero. Part C, if anything elastic is not stretched or squished or compressed, elastic potential energy is equal to zero. Okay. Going through this quick, but going to be focusing more on it through the examples. At the end, when you make everything zero, fill everything out, now fill in all the variables, you know, and solve for the missing variable. So I'm not going to completely solve any of the examples, but I'm going to go through how to do it. So I'm not going to do the calculations, but you'll see how this is done. Okay, so let's look at this example. The examples are going to get harder and harder, but here we go. A 0 0.5 kilogram ball is hit with a speed of 20 meters per second, and a fan in the bleachers catches it at 7 meters above the point it was hit. With what speed did the fan catch the ball? Okay, so this is the very beginning where it was hit. This fan over here, if you can see it, it catches the ball. Establish a zero line. So remember, I said at the beginning can be anywhere, but my suggestion is to put it at the lowest point where the object is. The object we're tracking is this ball here. The lowest point is uh, at the very beginning. So that's where I'm making the zero line. Okay, step number two, write down the whole equation. So all of the energy at the beginning is equal to all of the energy at the end. And we're just gonna write all of them down. Potential energy initial plus kinetic energy initial plus elastic potential energy initial is equal to potential energy final plus kinetic energy final plus elastic potential energy final. And you might be thinking like, why did I write that down? There's no springs, there's no elasticity. Why did I even put these elastic potential energy things down? And like I said, I've seen so many students make mistakes. Just write it all down. It takes two more seconds, but those two seconds can uh, save you lots of points. Okay, step three, go through each type of energy and see if any of the types of energy should equal zero. So I'm gonna go through potential energy first. So at the very beginning, is it at the zero line? Y yes, it is. So that means that the potential energy at the very beginning uh, is just zero. So I'm making that zero. Okay, at the very end, is the ball at the zero line? Uh, no, it's not. It has a certain height. It's actually uh, seven meters above the point it was hit. So no, this is not zero. We have potential energy at the very end. Okay, now kinetic energy. At the very beginning, is it moving? Yes, it is moving with a speed of 20 meters per second. So we have kinetic energy at the beginning. At the very end, is it moving? Yes, 
Uh, that's what we're looking for. With what speed did the fan catch the ball? Uh, elastic potential energy. At the very beginning, is there something elastic that's squished or that's compressed or stretched? No, there's nothing elastic here. So this is zero. At the very end, is there something that's squished or stretched? No, there's nothing elastic here. Okay, so now we're going to write everything down. Uh, the kinetic energy at the beginning is going to be equal to uh, the potential energy at the end plus the kinetic energy at the end. And we could just kind of fill this all in. One half, the mass of the ball is 0.5. At the very beginning, it's hit with a speed of 20 meters per second. Uh, at, the ver at the end, it's 7 meters above the point it was hit. And now we can do all this and we can just find uh, what that velocity that the fan caught the ball with. Okay. This, I would say, is the easier example. Let's keep going, uh, and hopefully we'll get the hang of it more, but it gets harder and harder. Okay, so a two kilogram block slides on a horizontal frictionless surface until it encounters a spring with a spring constant of 1,000 Newton per meter. The block comes to rest after compressing the spring a distance of 0 0.05 meters. Find the initial speed of the block. Okay, so when it's moving towards the spring, that's what we're saying is the initial. And when it compresses the spring over here, this is what we're calling the final here. Okay, first step here, establish a zero line. Okay, so it kind of seems like silly. It's like, well, it's already on the ground. Do we have to establish a zero line? Like, okay, just do it. Draw it on the ground then. This is the zero line. Great. Now write down the whole equation. Okay, so all of the energy at the beginning is equal to all of the energy at the end. Here we go, potential energy, kinetic energy, elastic potential energy equal to the potential energy at the end plus kinetic energy at the end plus elastic potential energy at the end. Great. Now we're going to go through each type of energy and see if anything should equal zero. Let's start with potential. At the very beginning, is it at the zero line? Yes, it is. It's on the ground. So that is zero. At the end over here, is it at the zero line? Yes, it is. It's zero. Great. Now, at the very beginning, is it moving? Uh, yes, it is. It's. Uh, I guess that's what we're looking for. Uh, so, but it is moving. At the very end here, is uh, the block moving? No, it comes to rest. So this is zero. At the very beginning, is the spring stretched or compressed? No, it's not. It's not stretched or compressed, so this is zero. At the very end, is it stretched or compressed? Yes, it is. It's compressed 0 0.05. So there is. Okay, so now we can just do 1 half mv squared is equal to 1 half kx squared. 1 half the mass being 2, velocity is what we're looking for. k is 1,000, and it's compressed 0 0.05. Okay, now we can do the calculations and just solve for v. Hopefully this is making sense. This next one is the hardest because it kind of has all the other types of energy. But let's uh, go to that. Okay. A ball of mass 2 kilograms is dropped from a height of 1.5 meters from the ground. Okay. Onto a spring. The spring has an equilibrium length of 0 0.5 meters. The ball compresses the spring by an amount of 0 0.2 meters by the time it comes to a stop. Calculate the spring constant of the spring. Okay, very good. So this is kind of the initial point we're going to be looking at. And this is the final point that we're going to be looking at. Okay, so first establish a zero line. Like I mentioned, this one is a little bit confusing where to put that. And you can put it anywhere and you'll get the same answer. But like I mentioned, it will be the easiest if you establish the zero line as um the lowest point the object is going to be so i'm going to put it right here okay now write down the whole equation okay all of the energy at the beginning equals all of the energy at the end and i'm sure by this point you're getting pretty tired of me doing all of this and the truth is i'm getting pretty tired of doing all of this but again like i mentioned it is just important to do so as a teacher, I've seen so many mistakes because people don't write it all out and they want to skip steps. They lose lots of points by trying to take shortcuts or just do things quickly. Okay, 
So now let's go through what's zero. So at the very beginning here, is it at the zero line? No, it's not. It's at a certain height above uh, the zero line. So there is potential energy. At the very end here, is it at the zero line? Yes, it is. So this is just zero. At the very beginning, is it moving? Uh, it's dropped, so it's actually not moving. At the very end here, is it moving? Um, let's see, it comes to a stop, so it's also actually not moving. Oh, no, sorry. Not the... Okay, the kinetic energy is zero. Very good. At the very beginning, is uh, the spring compressed or stretched? Uh, no, it's not, so this is zero. At the very end, is it stretched or compressed? Yes, it's compressed uh, this 0.2 meters. So now we have the potential energy, mass times gravity times height, is equal to the elastic potential energy. It looks so complicated, but we've simplified it so much. Okay, and then now we have 2, 10. The height is a little complicated here. So we should know that the, it's however much it's from the zero line. So it's not really to a point, but if this is 0.5 and this whole thing is 1.5, that means this part here is one meter. And from here to here, that's going to be this length right here, 0.2 meters. So the height is going to be 1.2. And it's going to be equal to 1 half K, which they don't give us. That's what we're looking for. And X, that's how much is compressed, 0.2 squared. And now we can solve K. All right, guys, that's pretty much it. I hope that helped. I hope that makes things not as confusing. If it's still confusing, I would suggest watching it again. And I wish you guys all the best. Thanks for watching, everyone.